Today, we're talking about why your English doesn't need to be perfect and what to focus on instead. Have you ever found yourself constantly saying hello in English only to accidentally greet a Spanish speaker with hola? Or maybe you've enthusiastically used a brand new English phrase only to realize it's hilariously outdated. Welcome to the club where perfect English is as mythical as unicorns. Today, we are ditching the pursuit of flawless grammar and embracing the wonderfully wacky world of real life English. After all, who needs perfection when you can have fun and be yourself? So we're going to jump into the delightful chaos of language learning where every slip up is a story and every conversation is an adventure. In this lesson, I'll cover the perfection paradox, what's more important than accuracy, why you need to embrace errors, practical skills, and more. We've got lots to cover, so let's get into it. It's going to be a wildly imperfect ride. Now, let's tackle our first big idea. Perfection in language learning is a paradox. Why? Because languages are alive. They're constantly evolving creatures. Ever tried to read Shakespeare and thought, is this even English? Exactly. Languages change and so does our approach to learning it. This evolution is the heartbeat of any language, including English. In fact, research in second language acquisition suggests that aiming for perfect English can hinder communication, not help it. Imagine trying to pin down a butterfly. That's what it's like trying to achieve perfect English. Languages by their very nature are dynamic, vibrant, ever-changing entities. And I'm going to remind you about the works of Shakespeare. His English, though brilliant, feels like a different language today. In the realm of second language acquisition, there's a growing consensus that chasing grammatical perfection might actually be a roadblock to effective communication. It's akin to obsessing over the fine details of a gourmet dish when all you really need is a simple, satisfying sandwich. The focus should be on the nourishment, not the garnish. Research backs this up. A study conducted by the University of Oxford revealed a fascinating insight. Learners who prioritized effective communication over grammatical precision were not only more confident in their language skills, but also demonstrated greater fluency in real life conversations. In our Exploring Academy, the focus is communication, fluency over perfection, fluency over obsessing about accuracy, connection over perfection. So I highly encourage you to come join us. You can join our small intimate group coaching program to practice English with us multiple times a week on live video calls with me and others. And you get real time feedback and we have lots of fun. And then you can also join our Exploring Academy community platform for self-guided, fully supported learning. Both plans are available at academy.exploring.co. Remember, focus on communication. That is the most important thing. And it will also boost your confidence and fluency. Now, this isn't a call to abandon grammar, but rather a nudge to recognize that communication is the heart of language learning, right? The ability to communicate with others, to connect with other human beings. The goal is to convey ideas, share feelings, and understand others, not to construct textbook perfect sentences. So let's embrace this dynamic journey of language learning where being understood and intelligible is much more valuable than being perfect. Now, let's shift our focus to fluency. Fluency is about smooth, effective communication, not flawless grammar. Fluency is what really matters in language learning. Now, fluency, my friends, isn't about rolling out sentences like a grammar robot. It's about chatting smoothly and effectively. 
Think about how you talk in your native L1 language. Do you speak perfectly all the time? Probably not. We all make slips, but the conversation goes on, right? Just like the show must go on, the conversation must go on. Do you always speak like you're in a formal debate? I highly doubt it. We all trip over our words. We all mix up phrases. But hey, life goes on, and so do our social interactions. Well, in English, it's the same. It's more important to be understood and to understand others than to nail every single irregular verb form. So I really encourage you to think about how you speak in your native language. You probably haven't given it much thought, right? Because it just comes naturally to you. You just do it. But I want you to think about it. You probably speak imperfectly, right? This is exactly how we should approach English. It's not about acing all of the grammar because let's face it, English has a lot of irregular verbs and confusing sentence structures and grammar rules that don't apply to other situations. Instead, it's about getting your point across, connecting with somebody on a deeper level. Can you make someone understand what you're saying? Can you get the gist of what they're telling you? That's the real win. Let's take a fun example. Imagine you're in Istanbul trying to offer some food in Turkish. You might mix up ekmek, bread, with a tek, skirt. But look, as long as you end up with a scrumptious kebab in your hand and not a skirt on your plate, you're doing great. It's all about the end game. Effective communication, not flawless grammar gymnastics. So let's focus on getting comfortable with the flow of English, embracing our mistakes, and most importantly, enjoying the conversation. That's what fluency is all about. Okay, let's get real about mistakes. We often treat errors like uninvited guests at a party, but guess what? They're actually your BFFs in disguise on this English learning journey. Every time you slip up, you're not failing. You're stepping up your English game. It's like working out. No pain, no gain, right? By the end of a workout, if you're using heavy dumbbells or heavy weights, you feel very weak. But it's through that weakness that you get stronger. It's through those mistakes that you become more fluent and learn. In the language learning word, there's this cool thing called interlanguage. It's like your personal language bridge between I'm learning and I've got this. So every time you make a mistake, that's just you building your bridge, plank by plank. You are working on your interlanguage to reach fluency. So I'm gonna share with you a funny little classic goof up from my French learning days, years and years ago. Once I mixed up cheveux, hair, with chevaux, horses. I also mixed up pleuvoir, rain, with pleurer, cry. So <laughs> there I was casually talking about having horses on my head or crying rain. Embarrassing? A little bit, yeah, it definitely was. But did it stick in my mind forever? Absolutely. It's these little hilarious mix-ups that really cement words in your brain because you remember the context, you remember the error, and you remember how you remedied that error. So my friends, the next time you mess up in English, give yourself a pat on the back. You're not just making mistakes, you're making progress. Embrace those errors, laugh at them, learn from them, and then watch as your English skills soar. All right, let's zoom out for a second and see English for what it really is, a dazzling cultural tapestry. Every person who speaks English paints it with their own cultural hues. So when we talk about English, it's not just about grammar and vocabulary. It's about stories, traditions, and perspectives from all over the globe. Think about it. There's Singlish in Singapore, where la and le add a whole new flavor to conversations, or Hinglish in India, where time pass and prepone are totally legit words. This isn't just linguistic fun. It's a reflection of how diverse cultures shape the way we communicate. Ever notice how English varies from place to place? In Australia, you might hear, good day, mate. 
where in the UK, it's more like, all right, love. This isn't just about accents. It's about rhythm, slang, expressions, and idioms that breathe life into conversations. Learning English is like being a cultural detective, piecing together the clues that each country's version of English offers. So let's not get hung up on perfect English, whatever that even means. Let's revel in its diversity. After all, every time you speak English, you're taking a world tour right from your conversation. So now the question is, what should you focus on instead of perfection? Well, the answer is simple, practical skills. This is where the language learning rubber meets the road. We're talking about beefing up your vocabulary, getting a grip on cultural nuances, and sharpening those listening and speaking abilities. It's like packing the right tools for a thrilling adventure in communication. So I challenge you to work on building a robust vocabulary, understand cultural nuances, and improve listening and speaking skills in diverse social settings. These are the tools that will make you an effective communicator. Imagine yourself wandering through the vibrant streets of Brooklyn or Manhattan. Here, tossing out a friendly, hey there, or knowing the right moment to say, thanks a bunch, can create a real connection. In these bustling New York boroughs, it's your practical skills that shine, not your perfect grammar. It's all about making that genuine human connection, showing respect, and truly engaging with the local culture. It's like this. Understanding the cultural context and having a handful of useful phrases can open more doors than knowing how to perfectly conjugate every verb in the subjunctive mood, every verb in the past perfect, how to perfectly conjugate every verb. It's about being ready to dive into conversations, make real connections, and immerse yourself in the culture. So let's shift our focus from chasing grammatical perfection or pronunciation perfection to building a toolkit of practical skills. That's your ticket to becoming a confident, effective communicator, no matter where your English journey takes you. Now let's dive into the exciting world of technology and language learning. It's an incredible era where apps, online courses, and digital tools open up a universe of possibilities. The real magic happens when you find the right online community and platform that aligns with your learning style. Think of these tech tools as your personal language learning allies. They're like having a pocket-sized tutor, always ready to help you practice, whether it's through interactive exercises, video calls, engaging in language games, or virtual conversations. And the variety, there's something for every type of learner, whether you're a visual learner, an audio buff, or somebody who learns best by doing, by having those conversations, by making those mistakes. The key is to use these tools to complement your real world experiences. They're not just about getting answers right. They're about preparing you to use English in daily life, both at work and in the social world. For instance, language exchange apps connect you with native speakers worldwide, offering a taste of different accents and slangs, much like you would encounter on the streets of New York or London. And let's not forget online communities. They are gold mines for language learners, providing a platform to practice, ask questions, get feedback, share experiences, connect with others, build your network. It's like being part of an international club, all united by the love of learning English and boosting your communication skills. So embrace these technological wonders, find your niche, and use them to boost your English journey in a way that's fun, interactive, and incredibly effective. Speaking of communities, now's as good a time as any to tell you about our amazing online professional development platform and community Exploring Academy. Our self-guided yet fully supported communication and language community is tailored specifically for professional development and personal growth. This unique platform offers a blend of autonomy and guidance, allowing you to steer your learning journey while having access to a wealth of resources and support. Whether you're looking to refine your business communication skills, 
improve your conversational skills, reach social fluency, enhance your professional vocabulary, or simply gain confidence in your workplace and social interactions, our community provides the tools and support you need to succeed with a variety of interactive modules, real world scenarios, and a network of fellow professionals. You'll find an environment that's not only enriching, but also aligned with your career aspirations. And in addition to the self-guided resources, we also offer an exclusive small group program designed for collective learning and deeper engagement. Meeting multiple times a week via video calls, this program offers you the opportunity to work closely with me and a small, dedicated group of peers who are absolutely wonderful. These sessions are a space to hone your communication skills, receive personalized feedback, connect with others, and engage in meaningful practice. You'll be able to work on specific areas of interest, from delving into impactful presentations, working on your elevator pitch, mastering the art of networking, striking up a conversation with anyone about anything, and boosting your confidence all while building a supportive network. This blend of individual attention and group interaction creates a dynamic learning environment that accelerates your professional language development and enhances your confidence and communicative competence. Remember, learning English is all about joy and exploration. It should be joyful, not stressful. Don't hesitate to experiment with the language, play around with words and expressions, and unleash your creativity. Inject humor, weave in some storytelling, and build personal connections to make your learning journey memorable and fun. For a dash of entertainment, dive into a British comedy, chuckle at an American sitcom, or get a taste of Aussie humor with a talk show. You'll pick up various accents and slangs, all while enjoying a hearty laugh. This approach makes mastering English not just educational, but a genuinely delightful experience. In wrapping up, it's time to bid farewell to the notion of perfect English. Let go of the idea of perfection in your English journey. Instead, embrace your unique journey, all with its ups and downs. Embrace the unique path you're on with all its twists and turns. Every conversation, every stumbled word, and every aha moment forms part of your extraordinary journey in mastering the language. Celebrate each milestone, no matter how small. The slip-ups and the mispronunciations, they're not setbacks. They're stepping stones leading you towards greater confidence and fluency. Learning a language is more about the journey than the destination. We spend the most time in the journey and not that much time at the destination. So it's a continuous process of growth, discovery, and self-improvement. Remember, every great English speaker was once a learner just like you grappling with irregular verbs and puzzling idioms. Your progress, measured not by flawless grammar, but by your ability to communicate, understand, and connect with others, is what truly, truly counts. So cherish this journey with all its ups and downs. Let the joy of learning, the excitement of connecting with others, and the satisfaction of expressing yourself in another language be your driving forces. English is not just a language. It's a bridge to new experiences, cultures, opportunities, and friendships. Keep building that bridge one word at a time and enjoy every step of this incredible, life-changing adventure. If you enjoyed our content today, don't forget to hit that like button, subscribe for more insightful language adventures, and share your own experiences in the comments down below. We love hearing from you, so share your stories with us. Until next time, keep practicing, stay curious, and happy learning. This is Mary Daphne signing off. I'll see you in the next lesson. Bye for now.